Welcome to Swell Season Surf Radio. I am your host for this episode, Tyler Brewer. Thank you for joining us. Freaking love that song. Mountain Goats. So good. Nice way to get kind of pumped up and feeling good and kind of feel like you can kind of persevere. Uh, I think a lot of us may be experiencing some uh, maybe lack of motivation, maybe a little bit of depression, a little bit of sadness or hopelessness or frustration in this current uh, coronavirus pandemic, but um, yeah, so trying to give us upbeat and try to get us to think positive as uh, with our music and other things. But uh, thank you for joining us. I uh, hope everyone is healthy, well, and safe, and their loved ones as well. Uh, we have a uh, very good show for you tonight. Uh, we get a really good hands on, first hand account of the coronavirus as we continue our coverage. Um, we're going to be sitting down and talking to FDNY captain and uh, former guest of the show, Christopher Gabby, a.k.a. Dorado. Uh, Dorado gives us a really good account on the ground. He is here in Brooklyn working, you know, with on the force, picking up, making rescues every day. Uh, and so we get a really good discussion here and we get a chance to really kind of understand what it's like being on the front line. So we get a little bit of a taste of that. And also uh, Dorado gives us a good good reason why we should maybe refrain from surfing at this time. So it's, a, it's still an ongoing conversation in our community. And we definitely want this to be a forum for that. So we encourage all our listeners to please feel free to contact us if you have any views on this. And speaking of which, our then next guest is Mr. John Brooks. John Brooks is one of the founders of the Florida Surf Film Festival uh, down by uh, New Smyrna Beach. and But he's also uh, a firefighter and EMT in Ponce Inlet in Florida. And so what's very interesting here is John has uh, actually worked with the community and his county uh, to petition to open up the surfing uh, beaches, to open up for surfing. Not so much to be on the beach, and hanging out so much, but uh, to be surfing responsibly. So we sit and talk with him, and it's a very interesting conversation because we know there's a lot of fire on both sides of this uh, debate or argument. And I think John makes a really interesting discussion and argument or a case that uh, they should be allowed to surf if they do it responsibly. Uh, I obviously, you know, give him my my opinions on it too, but it's a really good uh, discussion and I hope for the best, you know, and I hope they stay safe and I hope they can do it responsibly and maybe maybe be uh, a model for other parts of the country. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, but it's a great conversation and we also dive into a little bit of the film festival and what they have coming up or what they plan for the future uh, of surf cinema after this pandemic passes. Uh, but otherwise, it's a, it's going to be a really interesting show, and we're continuing our coverage, and we will probably continue to do this over the next few weeks as uh, more things develop and more interesting topics happen. Um, now, we would love to hear from all of our listeners, so please, one, don't forget to like us and follow us on Instagram or Facebook page as well. We do have both. Um, but also, please feel free. You can... Email us at uh, swellseasonsurfradio at gmail.com, or you can even call and leave a message. You can call us at 732-660-5751. Give us a call. Leave a message. Let us know your thoughts on the show. We'd love to hear from you. And, uh, yeah, and so we're going to go right into uh, our interview with uh, Christopher Gabby, a.k.a. Dorado. Uh, really, he's such a great guy. Really interesting to just talk to and yeah, sit back and listen, and uh, we'll, we'll uh, catch you on the other side. And then Kathy showed up, and we hung out, trading swigs from the bottle, all bitter and clean, locking eyes. Right. All right. Christopher Dorado, how is your pie, guy? 
All right. How's your corona? I hope you're staying uh, healthy and safe out there, Tyler. Yes, I am staying put pretty much uh, in my house. Uh, maybe a walk around the block or two and the odd jaunt to the bodega. But that's pretty well spread out. Um, uh, that, that's good. Over here in my household, uh, I mean, obviously, you know what I do and where I am. I'm out a lot. So I've, I'm at a high risk. Want to remind around. our listeners what you do? Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm captain of New York City Fire Department. Uh, no big deal. <laughs> no, you know, uh, I'm a professional, well compensated, yeah. and lucky. I'm very I'm very fortunate to, to be employed right now. I, yeah. I actually am, uh, you know, this is this is what I signed up for. I actually, I, I'm really emphatic towards the people that right now are struggling and thinking about where their next meal, their next, you know, mortgage yeah. payment, uh, car payment, et cetera, is going to go to. So, uh, you know. You know, all the thanks and praise is appreciated, but you know, this is what I signed up for. So, how's how um how's it been going? Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, I think you know. To be honest, you look at the news reports, and then you know, you pick you everybody picks their favorite media outlet, and you know, I've been watching a lot of the governor's talks, and uh, I've never been a huge, you know, obviously, you know, Cuomo's got a real checkered past, and you know, people can say not to dive delve completely into the politics of it but he's given a very clear concise direct message based on data and facts and i've been going by that and uh and just for me being out there and, the, and listening to the, the, the department radio and responding on the runs we're not at the apex now it's been it's been ramping up the last week and a half and he said today that he thought that you know and i'm not trying to create any more fear than already that's it's out there or spread misinformation, yeah. but in my in my opinion, we're we're starting to starting to go up the up the mountain. I think, as he said today, because we you know we're getting a lot more calls, yeah. uh, we're getting a lot more you know DOAs and a lot more people in our and arrest. It's uh, you know it's 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 pretty nuts. It's, this is unprecedented, you know. And I I was on a job during nine eleven, and I was a whole different whole different animal, a whole different uh, political bent, and everything. And this is this is something that I've never really twenty years in a fire department never experienced. Wow, you know. Wow, that's crazy. Just yeah, is it just full overwhelm? Do you feel like? Well, you know, like listen, the medics in the hospital, like you know, that this is like actually this is their uh, like listen, nobody's no no emergency service workers are doing this for praise. We're, we're yeah. compensated. We're professional. We we take you know we, we we take the good with the bad. We we like you know obviously nobody nobody doesn't like to be praised and thanked for for doing their job. But this is this is what people are really stepping up. And this is where people who are professionals and are trained, they 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 kick it into a whole nother gear. And I think that a lot of, at least for me, I know like the emotion. I don't get so I kind of go into like a detachment mode yeah. to try to keep sane and just try to focus on the task and the profession and be professional. Uh, but they're really the DMTs and the medical system is being overwhelmed. Where you know, I'm on the fire side, being being a fireman, and EMS, which is incorporated into the fire department. They are really stepping up there. They are, uh, you know, it's just, the system's overtaxed. And, you know, I really, there's some things I really, I, I can't give a lot of information no. out, but let's put it this way. Of course, of course. People who are sick and aren't at the critical level right now are like, we just aren't able to handle their, you know, the, the hospitals aren't, they actually probably, a lot of them would be better, worse off being at, being at the hospital. Oh, yeah. This is something, this is something that I really, you know, it's very easy to point a finger at the government and say people dropped the ball, people should have did this, you know, Monday morning quarterbacking it. Yeah. To be honest with you, I think that everybody's doing the best they can and people are really pulling on the rope in the same direction in my in my opinion. Yeah. I don't I don't I I don't see anything that's that would say otherwise, Tyler. No. Absolutely. That's great. You know, I don't know if that's a long winded answer, but I mean yeah. that could go on about this. You know, that's that's what's going on. How uh and how are you at home? You guys okay? Everyone healthy? Yeah, safe? so so far so far so good. And you know what? My my wife's been uh, my wife and kids have been great. The, she, my wife's been doing a lot of cooking and a lot of the Zoom workouts and really really keeping us grounded here by um you know really limiting us going out. You know, like even like we even considered to be honest with you going like the other night we wanted to have burgers and just to go get burger buns uh my uh, my wife zoe was like no you know what just we'll just cut up we have some ends of bread let's use that the why risk exposure exposing somebody else to go get something that's not really essential at this point and that's you know what that's uh, uh you know that's the attitude i think that you really you need to say and it's funny we were just having you know we just had a little little uh little uh 
Zoom uh, Passover. Happy Pesach, <laughs> by the way, Tyler. Thank you, Passover. thank you. Happy Passover to um, you too, my friend. Thank you very much. And uh, my wife Zoe, well, you can, uh, Tyler, I'm sure you wish her one as well. Yes, absolutely. We you little... and your whole family. <laughs> thank you, thank you as well. And But anyway, wow, we... Yeah. Um, you know, we were just the last thing we were just talking about before you called was that all these funny, all these world leaders that are really handling this thing well are women. If you yeah. look at New, Ze New Zealand's crushing the curve, I think Germany's doing well. Is there any other people that are uh, Iceland? Yeah. Uh, we're getting a little uh, feed information from uh, from 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 Zoe Denmark, you know, and, and she's like, my, my wife was like, I I don't want to sound sexist, but did you notice that the women the women world leaders that are handling this are, are using the data and the science? And I said, oh, but it's not sexist. You're stating the facts. You're keeping it, it real. Is. You know what I'm saying? It's a total fact, and I think more women need to be in charge. To be honest. <laughs> Yeah, it's, you know, listen, shout out, you know, it's, this is, uh, that's, that's, you know, that's, that's the, uh, that's, that, that really hit home now that we're just looking at this, like, I just was looking on my doodle and on my phone and I saw that, like, oh, you know, cause I've got some friends, you know, from when I go over to Indo that are from New Zealand and yeah. that's someplace that I've always looks like, you know, being a goofy foot, I certainly would love to spend yes, some time would. in Raglan, that's for sure. I, you know, I, think I can been attest. There, Tyler, yeah? I can attest. Yeah, you know, to get it, keep it a little surfy. But, um, you know, I saw that they're, I mean, granted, they're in a different, they're a little bit more isolated part of the world. They're not, uh, you know, the, the financial and cultural yeah. mecca that, that New York is. You know, it certainly seems like they're handling the curve a lot better. But, you know, that's, that's you know, a lot of different things. But it's data-driven, and that's what I'm trying to go by. Yeah. And, uh, you know, try to keep, the, you know, the, keep the politics out of it. Yeah. And uh, just, just listen to the facts, right, Tyler? Absolutely. So now the question is, to surf or not to surf? Oh, yeah. Well, listen, you know, I, I'm not in you know, the <laughs> I'm not going to you on the spot. I actually, I actually went to go the other day because I was actually on a nice walk uh, with my wife. Yeah. And um, it looked like the, the tide got right and the wind got right. And I was going to go. Actually, I said I wasn't going to go because, and you know what? I think that people, if they practice safe surfing and stay away and look to find their own peak and don't go to just the one easy, you know, spoon fed camera spot, yeah. you know, spots and stay apart. You know what? What do you, you know, people are out of work. They're, 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 they need stuff to do. Me, I'm a lot of risk. I had five different last night, my 24 hour shift from nine to nine. I had five confirmed arrests and those are all five, five dead deceased and two or three others that that we did we the hospital system probably wouldn't even take at this point we couldn't take because they weren't in full arrest yet that probably are not, that we're in a high risk category that are going to die i'm exposed to them now i'm wearing all the per the proper ppe i don't think it would be like me so my car was broken down you offered me a ride last week you would yeah. think you were going to go surf and i'm like you know what tyler I would, how would i feel if i gave if i, yeah. I exposed you to coronavirus and you didn't i have i know young healthy people that are my age or a little bit younger from the fire department that have been hospitalized from this, that are in the gym every day, that, that take pretty good care of themselves. So this, you know, this is hitting people different ways. So that's my opinion. I'm not going to tell other people not to surf. And I, but anyway, I was going to charge out there the other day, and it ended up, um, it ended up right when I got there. Of course, you know, when you could try to go midday at ad hoc, uh, the wind went on shore, and I'm like, you know what, I'm not going to risk it then, even though it looked okay. And I actually went to the, the skate park for a little while, but I wore a mask and stayed away from 